I'm Katrina and this is Sew and Tear. Today we're going to be making rabbit soup or rabbit stew. We'll find out what it will be when it's done. So we have parted out all of our rabbits. We had one that we cooked whole, which I'll show here. We just cooked up one of our rabbits. We decided to go simple for the first time and just put it in the new wave, which is like an Instant Pot, and put garlic salt on it. And that's all we did. And here's what it looks like. So we put in the whole thing. I mean, gutted and all that, but um, we left a lot of fat on the inside, so that's what it looks like. And this is our first try of our own rabbit. All right, so this is our first try of our own rabbit, and it's very lightly seasoned. It was still a little hard, and it was still a little stiff in the um, cooler, so I don't think the whole process would happen. It tastes good. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's good. Grab it. And then the rest of them, we parted them out and we bagged them up in freezer bags. Uh, we did four legs per bag. We kept all the back legs together. So we have two, uh, two rabbits worth of back legs in one, two rabbits worth of front legs in one, and two backs in, in one bag. And that's just the way we have chosen to do it. And so we actually have quite a bit of meat left on the rest of the carcass. So that's the rib cage area, the neck, and the hip area. And so we're going to make a broth and uh, strain that so it's, you know, just broth. And then pull the remaining meat off of the bones and put that meat back in and then add, you know, veggies and beans and stuff like that and make a soup. So here we go. So for the... I use a new wave, it's on my floor, because <laughs> it's big. But for the ribs, we cut them in half so that they lay more flat, so we can get a thicker, thicker kind of a sauce out of it. Struggling with this light here. Not good lighting here. All right, there we go. So we're gonna add some chicken stock. Uh, rabbit tastes very much like chicken, so chicken stock, I think, would just enhance the flavor of what's already there. And so this is some chicken stock that I made and canned earlier. You could use any kind of stock, I think. I just want to cover it. Well, I opened four. I didn't think it was going to be this much. I'll put one more in. Let's see what that works like. Yeah, that works. Try and shift things around so it's underneath. This is going to steam because this is a pressure cooker anyway, but I do kind of want most things underneath. All right, there we go. We're gonna cook it for, hmm, we'll cook it for maybe two hours. Try and get some of that bone goodness in there too. We'll come back. So I have picked out most of the meat and bones. I'm now going to strain this through a colander into a stock pot. Now, there are little bits left in the colander. This is inside the stock pot. And we can just lift this up and let that drain. You can see those bones and meat. There's our stock. We're gonna now put this back into the new wave after I rinse it out and add some things to make soup. So this has been sitting a while and it's still very hot but you can see there's a skim on the top and there's a little layer of fat so we're gonna wait for it to cool off and then put it in the refrigerator so we can skim the fat so Manuel is pulling off the meat on the, of the bones right now and I just went out to the garden and harvested some celery which was volunteer celery which was volunteer which was vol some celery which is volunteer celery um, which smells wonderful some beet greens 
I'm going to do the stalks. I don't think I'm going to put the leaves in just because we're going to be canning this and they're just going to be mush. And <laughs> the last of the carrots, they're a little funky looking and we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to peel them because we're canning them. Um, there's a couple more, there's three more big ones in the ground. One is, one I'm going to save for seeds and two, one's the top snapped off and the other one is just too hard to get out of the ground. So I'm going to have to dig those later. Um, but one will save for seeds. So anyway, this is a volunteer, this is a volunteer, these I planted and we're going to clean them up and chop them up for our soup. So Manuel is working on the, taking all the meat off of the rabbit. So these are the carcass um, pieces, and so here's what he's dealing with when it came out of the you mean pressure the, cooker. You mean the pulverized carcasses? <laughs> so I just went on stew with meat as a setting, and it got pretty well cooked. So don't do that if you're trying to preserve the meat with stuff. Anyway, he's separating it, and we have meat here that we're going to put back into the soup, and we might do it a little different next time, but we tasted it, and it tastes okay. It doesn't, it's not like the flavors all will be gone. So this is how much celery we ended up with, and the stems of the beet greens. So I'm just going to cut them into chunks and kind of treat them the same. So that they can go into their soup. <clears throat> so we decided to go a different route with the meat for the soup. Um, the stuff that was cooked in the new wave, the pressure cooker, it got a little overcooked and so we don't really want to cook it again in the soup with everything else and then again in the pressure cooker um, or in the uh, canning process. So instead, we're using the leftovers of this rabbit that we cooked a couple days ago, and it is much more firm, and will be will hold up better in the soup. But Manuel has a few ideas for the for the meat that was really cooked, such as a substitute for tuna fish, and make you know mix it with mayonnaise and stuff and use it with some salsa and make tacos. Um, what else? That's it. That's it? <laughs> I, I, I gave away all your secrets? Yep. All Ta right. Taco meat. So here is our, here's our cut up veggies. And we're gonna add potato to this and seasonings, garlic and um, dried onion and stuff. And that'll be soup. So what did we put in the soup? We put potatoes. We put all the stuff we chopped up and the chicken. And then next we put in garbanzo beans, fava beans, and lentils. Now I know lentils are going to end up mush, but it adds nutrients and thickness to the soup without adding soup thickener. Next we added uh, pink Himalayan salt, parsley, Gar mixed minced garlic, dried onion, mustard seed, black peppercorns, turmeric, and I believe that was all we added. Super good mixture. Oh, cumin. We also added cumin. Right. I just took this out of the refrigerator. I had this just closed because I had something on top of it. <laughs> and as you can see, the fat is at the top and then um, the rest of this is pretty congealed, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to skim the, t the fat off and that way we won't have that in our soup. <clears throat> when you have um, this cold in the refrigerator, this is really easy to do. I don't know if people use rabbit fat, but they might. I'll have to look that up to see if I should save it. It's okay to do to keep the fat in there if you want it. I just All right. 
Now where the handle was, looks like there's some fat buried. So there we go. So now this is mostly um, no fat. I mean, there's some in there. It's fine. And it's very gelatinous. You can see that's it's very gelatinous. And all that stuff, that's all collagen. That's why, what makes it gel. And that's very good for you. So we're going to put this into our pot and um, start it cooking. That's how much fat we got. A big bowl full. Wonderful sounds. It looks like we have the perfect amount here. Now, remaining in the pot is some little bits. I'm just gonna leave that and let this work its magic. Now, because we added everything, all the solids first, um, it does need to be mixed up a little bit, um, just so that it doesn't heat everything on the bottom only. Just kind of give it a little even turn. Probably should have stirred the solids first, but I didn't and that's okay. Guys, this is gonna be so good. What's nice about it being gelled is that it's also suspended. <laughs> All right, guys. So this is what it looks like. Looks yummy. Um, and we need to cook it up and then we'll have some for dinner and can the rest. All right, I'm using my new wave, which is a pressure cooker. It's just really large, which I like for soups. And I'm gonna put it on the top. Close it, seal it, and then we press soup. And we're actually gonna need more than that. Um, because I have those beans in there, we like it extra cooked. So um, I'm actually gonna add, I'm gonna add up to 40. And 42 is okay. Okay, start. It'll come up to pressure, which is going to take a long time because it is mostly cold stuff. And when it comes up to pressure, it'll vent and then seal, and then it will do the 42 minutes. So this is done. It's done its natural release. Let's see what it looks like. It looks like soup. It smells like soup. The veggies are floating. Ooh, it's not really. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. It's a very thick soup with all of those lentils and garbanzo beans and avas. It smells good. Can you smell it from there? Huh? Can you smell it from there? Yeah. Smell good? It's good. Okay. For some reason, we forgot to taste this on camera, but it was so good. So here is our soup. Ooh. I have just heated it back up inside the new wave. I did not heat it up on the stove because this is not for the stove. There's our soup and we are going to can it. We have our uh, lids and, and uh, gaskets heated up in hot water and we have the pressure canner warming up. Let's do this. The jars the jars are warm and are, are hot and uh, clean. <clears throat> so this process, I'm just mixing up the soup first because it kind of did settle after a while. And I'm using a canning funnel. <clears throat> I have opted for the, the regular mouth jars just because it is really, um, I have some other plans for wide mouth ones and I have, 
you know, these are pourable, so you can pour things out in these. So I think that that works best. Now I'm only filling them a certain amount because it's mostly solids. And I'm going to fill up the rest with the liquid portion of the soup. Now soup does need to be pressure canned. And the pressure canner I have fits seven quarts. If I were to do it again, I would have gotten the one that double stacks the quarts, but I did not. I do think it's worth it though, if you're gonna do big batches like this, because otherwise you gotta go through it twice. And since I have this new wave that has this huge, it's a 13 quart um, pressure cooker, it's, uh, it probably would be worth it to me to do the other one if I'm going to be making things <laughs> of this size. All right, so now I'm going to fill up the rest of this with the liquids of the soup. It's gonna get a few garbanzo beans and, and stuff like that in with it, but there needs to be enough liquid in there to make things bubble and, you know, um, get it all worked around. Whenever I can, I always use a bowl to set the ladle over. That way it makes less mess. All right, what's remaining is pretty thick, so I think we're just gonna eat it for dinner and then, um, you know, probably have a couple meals out of it. <clears throat> I'll show you what's left. So out of all that pot, that is what is left. And it looks delicious and smells delicious. I don't know if the color's coming out on this camera or not. Anyway, it's delicious. And then here are the jars. So next thing is to wipe the rim with we'll wipe the rim with uh, vinegar make sure it's clean this is the time for check for cracks so this has the gasket and the lid this is a harvest guard uh, reusable lid there is a learning curve on using these if you haven't used them but it's, I think it's worth it. Because then you don't have to buy lids. Alright, let's get our bands. This is finger tight. Showed you guys this before. Put, put one finger down. Oh, maybe I'll show you on this one. Put one finger down to hold it in place and just go there until it stops twisting. And if something's not fitting, make sure you have this on right and we might have a bent ring too. That might be another reason. It's fitting now, so it would just need to be moved over. I always back it off just, or not always, but I often back it off like I did just did, like I just did there. Um, just to make sure I didn't catch something and that I am actually in the grooves of the, of the jar. All right, those are ready. So ordinarily, I have my jar lifter. But since I don't uh, know where it is, I'm going to lift it from the jar, not from the lid, and place it in and I'm going to find my jar lifter <laughs> by the time it's take, time to take these out. So I set it back on. Um, it has a little latch here. You want to make sure you turn that. Um, and then you will see, well, I don't know if you can see from there. This side is lower than this side, so we just want to tap it or move it so that it is, there we go, so that it lines up. So it's even all the way around. So I'm looking on the side as well. That looks pretty good. Yep. Yeah. All right, so you do this just like a tire, opposite sides, crank down, check again 
that the spacing is okay. And we're going to turn this back on. I, I could have turned it on again. But we're going to turn it back on. It's going to come up to um, have a steady stream, of, steady stream of steam here. We're going to let that vent for 10 minutes. Then put the regulator on. And um, once it starts rocking, we will start our timer. All right, I'm not sure if you can see that, but that is venting steady stream of steam. So we're gonna vent it for 10 minutes before we put our weight on. So you can see it against the cabinet. I was pointing it towards yellow before and you couldn't really see it, but that's, that's a pretty steady stream. All right, it's been 10 minutes. So for me, 10 pounds of pressure is what I'm doing. Slide that over. Let that sit. You're going to stay in the kitchen a while now. Let that sit until it starts to, to rock. Once it's rocking, it should rock. Um, look at your manual and you'll see how often it's supposed to rock. But uh, that means it's hit 10 pounds of pressure. So we have a gauge here. But that has to be calibrated every year. So... Um, definitely trust your weight over your gauge because this is all I use this for is when the pressure comes down you know at the end when the pressure comes down I can see that it's down and and safe to open that's the only thing I use it for so other than that use this and you're good all right that's a rattle so we're gonna turn down our heat and I just happen to know that somewhere between these two marks is ideal for my stove. And we're going to set the timer for 1 hour 15 minutes. That is 75 minutes for soup. And start. At this point, you are not leaving the kitchen. So you can go around the corner. You know, a couple minutes keeping your ear out so you make sure you know that it's rattling at the appropriate time, um, intervals. And again, look up in your manual to see what that is for your particular pressure cooker. But I suggest you get comfy, get a, uh, pull up a chair into your kitchen, watch some YouTube, uh, read some recipes, something. So you're gonna stay in this in this room in this vicinity so you can hear this so you can see if it's if it's dropping below that uh, advised uh, you know number of rattles per minute or if it's going above it. So you need to stay in here and find something to do that you can sit on your butt with. There we go. So that whole thing counted as one rattle. All right, our timer just went off. This is all we're going to do. Turn it off. We're going to wait for the pressure to go down. That's when you use this dial. Wait for this to go all the way down. Then we're going to take this off and, go and leave it for a couple minutes. All right, pressure is down to zero. Time to take this off. Take it off always with a hot pad. Now we're going to wait two minutes. All right, it's been two minutes. So let's untwist these. And lift this up. Will it always lift away from you? I'm just going to set it here for for a couple minutes um, to let it the temperature change slowly. Taking this off. So there's the jars. I'm going to lift them straight out. They're still bubbling. Lift them straight out. And these are going to go on a towel, actually on my floor in the living room. Look at that. Still bubbling.
All right, this is the last one. I'm setting the timer for five minutes. And that it will be when I go and tighten down these lids. This is a step you only need to do for the Tatler or Harvest Guard lids. All right, it is, it is the next day. We're gonna see how everything's sealed. So, these have been sitting for over 12 hours. 12 to 24 hours is when you're supposed to take this off. Take the ring off. I'm gonna wash that later. And it is sealed if you can pick up the whole thing by the actual lid. I know there was one in here that wasn't quite sure about the jar, but we'll test things. That one's good. And we're going to wash the rims of these jars just so that they don't um, get gunky and stuff. Looks like that one's good. And I always leave this out extra after I've taken these off and test them later just to make sure. Um, that's just what I do. Looks like so far they're good. And you can see this one had a little bit of siphoning, um, but it's still sealed, so that's good. And again, I'm not I'm not lifting it by the jar when I do that. I'm I'm lifting it right here, right, and that's that's tight without the ring. Okay. There we go. They all sealed. Some good rabbit soup. Have fun making your soup.